Okay, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing some things that people typically are too ashamed of uh, to ask me about Section 8, okay? So I want to cover some of these things that uh, I see are all over the internet but have no real answer to them, okay? The first is, can I get Section 8 with no income? Can you get Section 8 with uh, an eviction? Can you get Section 8 with a misdemeanor? Can I get Section 8 with a felony? Can I get Section 8 with a warrant, okay? <clears throat> so, um, you know, all the questions start the same way, but they end with different results depending on <clears throat> the federal rules are. But, you know, another thing that heavily affects this are going to be the uh, housing authorities themselves, okay? Some are pretty relaxed and others like to invent uh, their own rules, okay? So, and we're going to go through that and I'm going to help you with each one and understand what the actual real answers to these questions are, okay? So the first is, can I get Section 8 with no income? Well, uh, yes and no, okay? So uh, typically they're going to require you to have an income because they only pay 75% of the rent, okay? Now the exclusion to that rule is if uh, you somehow manage to get maybe Section 811, which would cover, you know, it's called permanent supportive housing essentially, and they pay all of the rent, okay? But uh, that's usually something that you would either get through HUD or you would get through the continuum of care, okay? So in that rare case, I uh, know you would need an income, okay? So I guess if you need to know more about how those two things work, you're always welcome to comment in the videos or you can hire me as a consultant uh, and I can help you get through that process, okay? <clears throat> the other thing is, uh, can you get uh, Section 8 with an eviction, okay? Well, let's just put it this way. Uh, as long as it's been around five years or more, uh, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. Uh, some housing authorities may uh, want it to be a little bit longer, okay? But it's usually a safe bet if you haven't burned Section 8 itself before and you just have a normal, you had a normal market rate uh, unit out there where you got evicted, uh, this shouldn't be too big of an issue entering Section 8 system and uh, getting an apartment that way, okay? Uh, the other thing is I want to start discussing criminal records and the effect that some of that may have with certain housing authorities and section, getting Section 8 and vouchers and things of that nature, okay? So, uh, can I get a Section 8 with a misdemeanor? Yes, uh, most certainly so. I think the only two cases uh, in which would be a problem is if you have been convicted of a crime involving methamphetamine um, and also if you are a sexual you're on a, a sexual registry list, okay? So, uh, all other cases, uh, I think that those things are acceptable, okay? And I'm going to give a further explanation because we're going to talk about a felony here uh, in a second. So, with that being said, uh, can I get a Section 8 with felony? Um, the answer to that is yes, okay? But it's a complicated one, okay? First of all, if you are a registered sex offender, you can forget about it, okay? Um... Also, if you've been convicted of distribution of uh, methamphetamine or anything to do with methamphetamine, you should expect an automatic denial, okay? The other thing is uh, a large portion of all housing authorities around the country uh, will automatically deny you regardless of what crimes you've committed, whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony, okay? But that's not the end of the road. It's just, it's kind of like an insurance company when you, they need to pay out a million dollars to you when you die. Um, or to your relatives, okay? They automatically just try to deny you. That's just how it goes. But um, <clears throat> they can easily defeat that. All you would need to do before you apply for your house, Section 8 housing, uh, I would go ahead and go through the phone book or on your computer and look up a housing advocate, which are free. You can also find free housing advocates. And these advocates are lawyers, okay? They're not just people that know a little bit about this. These are actual lawyers. So, uh, you know, any, any place that has a uh, large homeless community usually has a lot of housing advocates. So well, they call them or drop-in centers or day centers. And uh, once or twice a week, uh, lawyers pop in and assist, okay? So you can find uh, free housing um, representation uh, through them. That way, when you apply, you should go ahead and expect for the letter to come, and then you'll be prepared to go ahead and uh, have, and get an appeal, and then you'll win that appeal uh, as long as you don't have the meth or sexual 
You're not a, a registered sexual offender, okay? Now, I want to talk to you about some specific crimes that uh, landlords simply don't like. And so even if you get through this process, there are specific things that can be difficult, okay? So you really need to prove your case face-to-face -face with your landlord so that they know uh, that you're not going to be a problem. But before I tell you that, let me tell you this. You know, if you've committed a felony or a misdemeanor, you need to have been at least five years ago, you know, to make things, get, you know, on your appeal, it needs to be at least five years ago. It means that you need to have finished your prison sentence, okay, your jail sentence, and all of its requirements, okay? Now, I understand that some people are on parole and probation for a very long time. I get that. It's better when you're not on it, but uh, if, you have to, if you have to be on it, then you're on it for 10 years or a lifetime, then, uh, you know, it, it doesn't mean you're not going to get um, the appeal to be won, okay? So I'm going to flip over pages uh, to a page here. You know, you guys can't see this, but um, we're going to go through some of these different charges. Okay. Now, look, uh, landlords do look at people that have uh, illegal drug use, abuse, possession, distribution, and trafficking. Okay, those are big deals to landlords, and so you'll need to prove that you no longer live that way. Uh, an eviction from a public or private housing, um, you know, if you've been evicted in another state from Section 8 or uh, from a COC, that could potentially be a problem. Um, another thing is if you have been convicted of manufacturing also with uh, that, some uh, housing authorities don't even like for you to have an arrest record, but like I said, we can fight that. And convictions, uh, an intent to distribute, um, you also need to consider warrants. Uh, they don't want you if you've got warrants, okay? So don't, if you've got an active warrant, you need to clear that up, okay? And I'm not talking about traffic tickets, all right? Now, here are, now here are the bigger things that, uh, that could be a, an issue, okay? Now, we're speaking after you get your voucher, okay? If you're the type of person that can't control yourself and you need to constantly be in the front lawn drunk, you're, gonna, you're just going to be a problem, okay? They're not going to like that, and... Uh, you know, they'll quickly, if they do let you in and you do something like that, they'll kick you out, okay? Um, <clears throat> theft, burglary, robbery, and shoplifting. Let's just stick with theft, burglary, and uh, robbery, okay? Look, guys, you're going to have to really prove to them that you're not going to be doing that in the complex, okay? So you don't take anything that doesn't belong to you. I don't care if it's uh, someone else's trash, okay? And uh, if you do have that history or record, then you need to clarify with the, the landlord, you know, you're not going to behave in that manner, okay? You know, if you're involved in any types of drugs and prostitutions or any kind of shady shit, I'm just telling you right now, you're wasting your time dealing with Section 8 because if you do manage to get through this, win the appeal and all that, and you look like a bad actor, then they're going to pretty much deny you even if you have a voucher, okay? Um, if you have uh, incidents of being lewd, um, uh, and other pro, uh, public drunkenness, harassment, indecency, exposure, uh, may, causing mayhem, fighting. Um, you know, you have abused children, the elderly, uh, women, stuff like that. Uh, for a lot of landlords, that's a personal issue. And so, you know, just on principle, they just may not want you there, okay? I, and I understand that, you know. If, if I were a landlord and I found out you abused your children... I don't want you on my property either, okay? I'm just being real. That's that's my right when I own a property, all right? And other criminal patterns, okay? So if you're going to walk around and uh, act suspicious, then, you know, <laughs> you know, we have to think about people that don't commit crimes, you know, and uh, how we come off to those people that don't, okay? So with all those things being said, you know, yes, you can get Section 8 housing, okay? And, um... You can get it with a record, and uh, so once you get the voucher, it's still up to the landlord if they believe that you are uh, going to be a good, a good or bad actor on their property, okay? Now, for you guys that have virtually no income or a tiny disability check and stuff like that, I would highly recommend going through the continuum of care because that would allow you to get permanent supportive housing that pays all of it. Also, the continuum of care is able to set you up with housing that doesn't care whether you have a criminal record, okay? But I still believe that um, if you're a registered sex offender, that could play a, a, it could probably cause a big problem, okay? And the manufacture of meth may or may not be a big deal in the COC, okay? But otherwise, 
They, the, the Continuum of Care's um, permanent supportive housing is set up with the intent of dealing with people that were formerly convicts and uh, homeless. So if you don't know a lot about that, then you know you maybe should speak to me uh, about that. I can help you with that. Now, you guys that are just uh, amateur criminals that like to get drunk and drive and get DUIs, look, it's not going to be a big problem, okay? But uh, if you're going to have a glass of whiskey every time that you're living on a property, if that's likely going to be a problem. And then for all these different things that I talked about, if you get that apartment and uh, you commit any of these crimes, that is justification for them to kick you out. In other words, if you get arrested, you have a warrant, get arrested or convicted of anything, any of those three things, okay? That's enough for them to put you out of there, okay? It's strictly up to the housing authority uh, to put you out of there, okay? It doesn't even matter what the landlord's doing. Um, just on principle, uh, Section 8 and the Housing Authority can put you on the street. So, look, you know, guys, I hope this has been helpful. So, there is a way. You do need a housing advocate, and uh, you need to appeal, and you need to have some money, okay? So, I hope you all have enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time.